Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to the first EDSAC online seminar. Okay, we know that uh, due to the COVID-19, many conference and uh, workshops uh, have been postponed or canceled. So we try to uh, continue to share the knowledge in our electron devices and the solid state circuit community. I proposed this uh, uh, online seminar series and we are glad to have Dr. Zhi Zhang from University of Electronic Science and Technology of China, UESDC, to present his recent work on each among garlic. So Dr. Zhang received his bachelor and a PhD degree from Huazhong University of Science and Technology in 2013 and 2020, respectively. Between 2017 and 2019, he was a visiting scholar in Argonne National Lab, United States. So he is now a postdoc fellow in UESDC. Currently, he is working on propagating characteristics and uh, manipulation of spin waves in planar micromagnetic structures. Without further delay, let's welcome him to give this seminar talk. Thanks for uh, thanks for Professor uh, South's introduction. Uh, so. Uh, my topic uh, uh, would be the uh, propagation and the manipulation of the spin waves in the uh, microstructure, the neutron iron garret. Uh, so uh, now I'm I'm a, a postdoc in a, in a group in in the UEST C UESTC. Uh, this is a web page of this uh, uh, of the my group. And uh, uh, so firstly, it's an uh, advertisement uh, on, on the SPIN Summit uh, uh, 2020. Uh, so uh, it's supposed to be held uh, at this time uh, uh, in this place, but now due to the virus, uh, due to the virus, uh, it's, uh, it's to be determined and uh, uh, so uh, you can trace uh, information uh, following uh, following this uh, website. Uh, so here you you can suffer the website uh, of our group, and uh, then you can click this button, and uh, you you can get more info detailed uh, informations. Uh, so here, firstly, I also want to. Uh, make a brief, uh, uh, brief self-introduction that uh, here I just uh, want to show uh, that my major is uh, in engineering, uh, that uh, I wish to, uh, to share a point of view of the spintronics from the engineering point. Uh, so, so you maybe uh, some of you major in the physics and uh, you understand uh, the spin waves from the physics uh, from some modern advanced uh, physics uh, no, physics knowledge so here i want to uh, share some uh, some of my some of my view some of my ideas from the engineering point uh, to see how the spin waves like uh, so this is the uh, outline of my uh, my presentation today. Uh, so I would like uh, here I would like to uh, stress on the four four point four points. Firstly, it's a spin wave series, and uh, and then uh, the methods that I think uh, uh, your uh, Professor South students can have a better knowledge from the actual practice uh, instead of my presentation. So you can, uh, and, uh, and then I, uh, I would uh, like to share how I use this series and the methods to do some, uh, to do some scientific research and uh, uh, yeah, they, they are my uh, PhD uh, that I done when I was a PhD student. Uh, so there are many uh, about the edge localized spin waves uh, and the waveguide spin waves. Uh, 
And uh, based on this logic, is I designed the uh, a preliminary uh, designed uh, a device called a spin wave frequency division multiplexer. Uh, so, okay, let's uh, begin from the very beginning a uh, spin wave series. Uh, so, I assumed that uh, most of um, you know, uh, most of you uh, can see these equations uh, at the beginning of many papers. The, it's called the LLG equation, the landau lifshitz gilbert equation. So, uh, so how this uh, equation comes out? Uh, many papers uh, uh, would not uh, explain it and uh, just uh, give it out and uh, then start uh, their research. Here, I would like to uh, show you how this uh, uh, equation is come out and uh, uh, from the Newton's second law, uh, which is learned when when we were when we were in high school. Uh, so this is uh, Newton's second law. Uh, the force is equal to the mass mass times the acceleration. Uh, so this is uh, a differential. Uh, uh, this is uh, the differential uh, form of this uh, uh, equation. Mm, so P stands for the moment. So when we uh, use this. Uh, uh, this law into a rotation, rotational system. So we uh, we cross the distance uh, on the right. Uh, so then we can uh, the tau is a torque uh, here, and uh, so we can derive the, this equations into this form. And uh, the i is uh, the rotational initial. And the omega is the angular uh, speed. Uh, the alpha is the angular accelerate. So, uh, so uh, on the right, uh, we can write uh, this uh, Newton's second law into uh, into this formula. L is uh, uh, angular moment, uh, angular momentum. Mm. And then uh, in the in the electric, uh, in the electrodynamics, uh, we know that the torque, uh, the torque uh, on the uh, on the dipolar uh, is uh, is like this. Uh, if we apply the field uh, which is not uh, parallel to the to the magnetic dipolar, so the torque would uh, be the m cross h. Uh, and uh, and uh, here uh, combined with uh, Newton's second law, the, uh, then we, we can we can get this uh, equation. And uh, yeah, and uh, we need to notice that uh, there is a relationship between the angular moment and uh, the uh, magnetic moment. Mm. So finally, we can get uh, this. Uh, air, uh, it's called the uh, uh, landau lifshitz equation. Uh, the landau lifshitz equation, uh, which is uh, lossless. Uh, so Gilbert uh, provides another term to, to explain uh, why there is a loss here. Uh, but what I need to uh, point out is that it's a phenomenological uh, interpretation based on the phenomena they observed. Uh, at least uh, I read the textbook uh, many years ago, uh, written many years ago. So I don't know whether it uh, has a, a logic uh, uh, interpretation now. Um, so uh, at, uh, at least at that moment, uh, uh, at that moment, uh, the, uh, the Gilbert uh, provided this interpretation uh, just uh, uh, without any demonstration or explanation. So different uh, people would uh, have different uh, terms. Uh, so, but uh, uh, what uh, we use most is this uh, Gilbert uh, terms. Uh, so in many papers, uh, uh, 
literatures uh, that at the beginning we can see these equations. So that's how it uh, comes out here. Uh, so here we can see that there are two terms in these equations. Uh, for the first term, for the first term, uh, it would uh, um, help. It would help the uh, momentum pro uh, keep on procession uh, around uh, uh, around the uh, uh, center, and uh, the the second term would uh, decay this precession. Uh, so, so here the alpha would uh, decide the, uh, how fast the the precession would uh, uh, would uh, go back to the to the balance to the balance position. Uh, so the larger the alpha. Uh, the faster the the press the precision would uh, uh, would uh, go back to the balance position. So that means the the stop of this precision. Uh, so so that's why uh, the larger the alpha, the the more the the loss of the materials, the magnetic materials. Here uh, we can see uh, in the in the study of the magnetic materials, people found that uh, the each iron galette uh, has, uh, has a lo low and low lowest uh, damping factor uh, among all the magnetic materials. Uh, so the, it's, uh, uh, these alpha values are studied from the bulk materials uh, instead of uh, for for the film for the same film materials, these alphas would uh, be increased uh, due to some scattering at the surface or some defects. Uh, so, uh, so next, uh, you, uh, so I would uh, uh, recommend uh, this uh, this textbook uh, to to go uh, to keep on. How to figure out uh, uh, how to figure out uh, the concept of uh, ferromagnetic resonance? Uh, so we can say that uh, this uh, this LLG equation is uh, about uh, the relationship between the magnetization and uh, the external field. So the we know that uh, the uh, in uh, electrodynamics, uh, the, their relationships uh, is uh, is connected uh, um, is connected by the concept of uh, perme permeability. So, from the LLG equation, we can get uh, the uh, we can figure out the uh, the permeability in in the microwave uh, frequency range. Uh, so you uh, you can refer to uh, to this uh, book uh, for for some more details. So I just uh, give out uh, the some main uh, some main uh, concepts here. Uh, we need to use here. So you just uh, expand uh, this uh, uh, of this uh, magnetic the. Both the magnetization and the external fields are some vectors. So you can uh, write them in. You, you, you can write them into uh, three, uh, three components like a vector and uh, then some matrix, uh, some some cross uh, uh, some cross uh, operation. Uh, and then you can um, get uh, this uh, this matrix uh, about this uh, uh, formula. It's called uh, the permeability tensor, and uh, it means that uh, it means that uh, if you apply the uh, field in the x direction, then you can you might get a uh, uh, magnetization in the right in the y direction. That's uh, that's exactly how described uh, how the magnetic moment is uh, spinning here, is a uh, precession here. Uh, so, uh, so how do the fMR come out? Uh, you can see that uh, uh, 
uh, the components in the uh, in the tensor in, in the matrix uh, uh, it's like this uh, in in here if the the omega is an angular uh, is an angular frequency if it's equal to a, to a certain value which is called the uh, uh, it is called the Kittel's equation then this value would become very large and then it means that it can absorb the microwave for en uh, energy uh, 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 yeah, firstly uh, the rotation would become very fast and uh, the, there would be a, a strong absorption of this uh, microwave energy. And uh, secondly, so here we need to ignore uh, the second uh, uh, order small quantities. It means that uh, the microwave components is much smaller than this, than the static, than the static components. Here and uh, the two compo the two uh, vectors are perpendicular. Mm. So uh, so here generally, uh, for example, uh, the static uh, field uh, might be one hundred oster, and uh, the uh, the RF uh, field is usually less less than one oster. So that's under that. Uh, uh, condition, we can ignore the second order small quantities, then we can got uh, some fMR informations. Uh, if it's very large, the RF field is very large, the nonlinear uh, effect would, uh, would uh, happen here. Uh, so next, uh, so how we um, here, here, uh, here! I just uh, show you the the single spin of a uh, electron. Um, uh, so it means that these formulas can be uh, <coughs> can be established uh, uh, if the all the spins, if the spins in the materials is uh, uh, precession uniformly. So if it's not uniform, uh, so uh, we need to combine it uh, with uh, Maxwell equations uh, and uh, and uh, to uh, to figure out the uh, to figure out the some more information such as uh, dispersion relationships. Uh, in the Maxwell equations, uh, here uh, we uh, here, there's something to do with uh, uh, constructive relations, where the uh, tensor permeability effects here uh, would uh, have some effects here. And uh, for the spin waves, uh, under some conditions, uh, uh, such as uh, some, uh, some wave vectors is much smaller than some, uh, so, uh, some values, then we can get we can get that. Uh, we can get that some uh, uh, at some frequency band. The uh, the electronic fields, uh, the intensity of the electronic fields is very weak. Only the magnetic fields can uh, can can be uh, can cannot be ignored at some frequencies. That, that's the frequencies for the spin waves. That, that's the conditions for the, for the spin waves. Uh, so for, uh, also for more information, I would uh, refer to this book, this textbook. Uh, and uh, uh, here I give some, um, some major uh, conclusions uh, about the uh, about uh, the three kinds of uh, spin waves uh, according to the uh, directions, the wave vector direct directions uh, and uh, the external field. Uh, firstly, uh, it, uh, when, when the external field is uh, out of a plane of the magnetic film, uh, yeah, uh, the, this wave is called the uh, forward volume uh, spin waves, uh, and uh, 
and uh, when the external field is in plane uh, and uh, parallel to the wave vectors, uh, it's called the uh, backward volume spin waves. And uh, and uh, when the wave vector and the external field uh, are, in are in plane and perpendicular to each other, it's called uh, uh, surface uh, spin waves. Uh, so as for the uh, volume spin waves, uh, it's the, the reason is that uh, the energy of the spin waves are many, are many converged uh, in the uh, in the center in the body of the of the films. Uh, for the surface spin waves, uh, uh, the the energy is mainly converged at the surface of the films. Uh, so the detailed explanation of the of the reason why why the energy would be be distributed like this. Uh, 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 would uh, uh, the this book this context gives a more detailed explanation? So, so here uh, in my study, I just study uh, I study the uh, the the surface uh, uh, spin wave structures. Uh, so here I can see I can see that uh, why we need to start why we need to study the spin waves. Uh, we, uh, some papers claim that uh, uh, it's uh, power saving, uh, it's, uh, it has a low, low energy loss because you, as you can see here, the spins uh, would uh, precession and this kind of precession would uh, propagate uh, along the uh, along the materials and uh, without the movement uh, of the electron charges and then the uh, jar heat can then be reduced. Uh, as for the surface spin waves, uh, since the energy is mainly converged as a surface, so it's easy to, uh, to interact with some other some other particles, uh, some other uh, class particles like the photons or, or uh, phonons. Uh, and uh, you can see here, this, this, is, uh, this is a really, uh, really fresh uh, paper uh, published uh, in 2019 that uh, it uh, uh, it shows that the surface spin waves uh, is propagating uh, at the bottom or top surfaces according to the uh, different uh, directions. Uh, uh, and, uh, and what's more, the surface spin waves is a very, uh, is a rather robust. It, uh, as you can see here, if uh, uh, there is a defect uh, uh, at uh, on the uh, on the surface on the on the bottom surface, but uh, it uh, looks like that the surface wave can hardly be affected by this defect by this defect. Uh, so it means that if you if uh, your film your magnetic film has some. Uh, has some uh, defects. The surface wave is not uh, so sensitive. Uh, so no, this, that, uh, these are the advantages of this uh, uh, this kind of uh, spin waves. So mm, that's uh, that's also another reason why I choose it. <clears throat> mm. So uh, so we have the spin wave uh, series. And uh, to study it, uh, we have some we need to have some good uh, magnetic materials. <clears throat> mm. So uh, among the uh, in in our in this area, the magnetic materials uh, used to study the spin waves are many some some metallic magnetic materials like the Hussler, the uh, the co the CFB or copper iron boring or, or aluminum and uh, and so on and uh, the pomeroy uh, 
the Pomeroy and uh, the the Yig, the the Yig of uh, materials. Uh, so the metallic magnetic films uh, are a little a, a little bit lossy than they have a, a little bit lossy than the Yig Yig materials. As you can see here, the alpha damping is larger a little bit uh, is. Uh, larger than the EEG materials, but their, uh, their magnetization saturation are higher, are also higher, uh, because uh, in this uh, uh, LLG equation, the MS is also another important uh, parameter. Uh, so as for the exchange constant, uh, it has something to do with the quantum physics. Uh, so, uh, so it's important uh, just uh, 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 so in, in my understanding, uh, we need to add some terms in, in the, uh, in the uh, equations, uh, in the really uh, uh, dispersion equations. Uh, uh, so that, that's my understanding. Uh, so uh, for the, for the EEG materials, uh, it's a kind of insulator, uh, uh, ceramic, so uh, and uh, the uh, crystalline structures uh, is uh, uh, a little bit uh, complicated than the uh, than the uh, metallic materials. Uh, so here there are five uh, iron uh, atoms in one uh, chemical formula. Uh, it's like uh, that uh, two two uh, iron atoms is uh, spin up and the three, uh, three uh, iron atoms are spin, spin down. So one is uh, left. That's why it, it uh, has some, mag uh, so that, that's why it's a very magnetic uh, uh, materials. Uh, uh, so so the, uh, this is a, uh, uh, the structure, the crystalline structure of the EEG materials. Uh, uh, another uh, property is that the EEG materials uh, is, uh, has a lower uh, anisotropic uh, uh, magnetic, magnetic uh, uh, anisotropy, very low, is, a very, is also very low. So it's, uh, uh, histories, uh, its uh, history slope is uh, very uh, narrow, and uh, it uh, changes um, the rapidly around the zero uh, around the zero uh, field. Mm. So, uh, so for this uh, ceramic insulator, uh, insulator, uh, EEG film, EEG materials. So we need to use the uh, RF sputtering, uh, RF sputtering technology to do the deposition. Uh, it's uh, it's like this. Uh, the reason is that uh, it's an insulator. We need to avoid the charge effect. Uh, we need to avoid the charge effect, so we need to use RF source. Uh, so the, uh, are the, uh, this is uh, uh, parameters for the fabrications that uh, for, I believe for different uh, systems, uh, uh, we need to optimize the, maize the different uh, fabrication uh, systems to get uh, good quality films. Uh, uh, another uh, uh, here uh, in the fabrication, I need to point out uh, when we are trying to uh, reduce in, in the annealing, when we are trying to uh, to decrease the temperature, we need to slowly decrease the temperature uh, to ensure that uh, every atoms in the films uh, can. Uh, is uh, is not uh, so fiercely uh, is not uh, so fiercely uh, cooled uh, down. Otherwise, it might be in not it might might not possibly not be in the balanced uh, position. In, and and then the film quality is, is would not be so good. Uh, 
Uh, so for the Yibin, uh, the another uh, technology for the film deposition is uh, Yibin evaporation. Uh, so it can be used to deposit some metallic materials uh, since uh, uh, metallic is a conductive metals are conductive so the the e beam would not accumulate uh, the the electrons would not be accumulated on this materials um, so and uh, also we need to do some uh lithographies uh, say like like the uh, le uh optical lithography and the e beam lithography uh, the electron beam lithography, uh, since the uh, materials, the substrate grow, uh, for eager growth uh, is called the uh, gadolinium gallium gallate. It's also a kind of, uh, uh, it's also a kind of uh, uh, insulator. So before the e beam lithography, generally we need to uh, sputter a five nanometer gold to avoid the charge effect. If there is no gold here, as you can see, the, the e beam would drift uh, because uh, would drift with time because uh, charge would accumulate at the surface of this uh, uh, substrate and then would uh, uh, cause some, the, would, uh, uh, would cause some errors. Uh, of these uh, patterns you design. Um, Bilayer uh, resist uh, are for the undercut uh, and uh, to avoid, avoid uh, that the, uh, the unwanted materials to be collected with uh, the, the pattern the materials that uh, we want. Uh, so when we lift, do some lift off, then the, uh, the patterns would uh, have a good shock the shape. Uh, so uh, for the measurement, uh, we also use uh, ferromagnetic resonance. Firstly, we need to, uh, this is uh, a schematic for the uh, fMR experiment using the VNA, uh, using the VNA uh, ve vector network analyzer. Uh, that uh, the uh, two probes uh, are aligned on the CP, the Copeland waveguide, and then the the sample, the film, the magnetic film samples are uh, uh, face down on this on this uh, uh, Copeland waveguide, and then we do the we do the measurement. Mm, so. Uh, for the setup of this system, this fMR resonance, uh, this fMR system, uh, there are three important uh, device, uh, devices. One is uh, uh, VNA, the, the other is the electromagnet uh, with the Gauss meter to measure the, uh, to measure the field. And, uh, the third is a current source to provide the uh, current to supply the current to con to control the electromagnets. Um, so the idea is like this: firstly, we uh, we measure the uh, the S two one parameter, uh, the S two one parameter at a very high. Uh, at a very high field, uh, so uh, so at a, at a, uh, under this condition, the fMR frequency is uh, far beyond the interested the, the interest frequency band. Uh, so this response is uh, simply due to the structure of the Copeland waveguide and uh, the the external uh, microwave for circuit. Uh, and then uh, we measure the uh, S21, the transmission parameter at uh, the interested uh, field and the interested frequency. So 
And at last, we do the subtraction, and then we can get a very good uh, resonance uh, uh, curve, uh, just uh, simply due to the uh, uniform due to the uniform precession of the spins in the magnetic films. Uh, not a, uh, there are no other effect, uh, other circuit RF uh, circuit uh, effect uh, in this curve because we we already have done the subst subtraction here. Uh, so. Uh, so how we can uh, how we can deal with these data? Uh, so uh, here the, there's a uh, I refer to uh, this we can refer to this paper. Uh, here I I want to point out that uh, uh, in the fMR parameter uh, in the fMR experiments uh, uh, the purpose is to figure out the magnetization, saturation, and the alpha damping of our fabricated materials. Uh, so for, we use the Kittel's equation to do the fitting. Uh, however, this uh, uh, Kittel's equation is uh, simplified here uh, because what we fabricated is a magnetic film. Uh, it's very different from the bulk materials. So the uh, uh, actually uh, the uh, the Kittel equations here would be very uh, be much more uh, comp complicated. Here we need to add some terms like the uh, anisotropic field or some other surface field uh, terms. Uh, yeah, strictly speaking, we should do it like this. However, uh, what uh, we can just uh, use this uh, simplified uh, uh, equation to to determine a value uh, of the magnetization. It's called a uh, effective uh, magnetization. We can use this value to calculate uh, some uh, some spin wave related. Uh, 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 equation in, in the spin wave uh, related uh, form, uh, equations such as uh, dispersion of the of this diver dispersion relationships of this film of this magnetic film no problem uh, but this value yeah, would uh, would be different uh, uh, with uh, the values we measure using some other equipment uh, such as uh, squid or PPMS, uh, that's that value is for the uh, for the actual bulk value, uh, bulk material, uh, very close to the bulk materials value. Uh, but uh, uh, under that, uh, uh, if we measured that value. Uh, we would also consider some other uh, parameters like the anisotropic field or the surface uh, uh, field uh, terms to to use uh, to when when we when we were uh, calculating the dispersion relationships. Um, so that uh, that's a point. That's a very important uh, uh, point because uh, uh, when we uh, when some professors saw this value, uh, they they saw that it's different with uh, classical literature uh, reported uh, value. Uh, but uh, uh, that that's uh, not surprising. Uh, so, uh, so in my in my study, I choose uh, these films uh, to to do my scientific research, uh, uh, considering all kinds of factors, uh, including the uh, damping factor and uh, the the this uh, uh, line weights due to the uh, due to the non-uniform of these uh, magnetic films. Uh, so the uh, so uh, I choose the, this film. So I 
so uh, correspondingly, I need to, I want to deposit uh, this uh, uh, 75 nanometer pomoloi uh, to, to also to, uh, to do the uh, scientific research and uh, uh, capital with silicon dioxide, uh, the purpose is to protect uh, the metallic materials and uh, to isolate these uh, materials. Uh, so another technique is uh, brilliant light, uh, light scattering. Uh, so this is uh, this system. The theory for this system is uh, two conversion, two conversion loss. Uh, the uh, the energy and the momentum con, uh, conservation. Uh, so. Uh, as for the detailed uh, uh, principles, uh, we can refer to this paper. Uh, but uh, uh, the most important uh, uh, conclusion is that uh, using this system, we can map out uh, uh, the the pattern, the patterns in the magnetic structures uh, like, like this. Mm, so the intensity. Uh, the intensity of the brilliant light scattering uh, implicate uh, the the intensity of the spin waves uh, in in this uh, space. Uh, so at this moment, uh, I I finished the the, uh, the first part. Uh, now uh, I would like to talk some, uh, talk uh, about uh, something about uh, my own scientific research. Uh, firstly, uh, I study the uh, edge localized spin waves. Uh, uh, so, uh, firstly, uh, I, I the, this is a structure I I studied. Uh, so, for the edge localized uh, uh, spin waves. The general idea is that uh, due to the uh, the magnetic field, uh, the effective field, the effective field at the edges of the X stripe uh, is much weaker than the field uh, along the uh, in in the in the center area of the X stripe. So, uh, so the edge localized spin waves uh, would be uh, the frequency would be much lower than the uh, than the spin waves propagating the center of the X stripe. Uh, so, firstly, uh, I what I do uh, is uh, do is using the simulation. Uh, so, I firstly I use the sink excitation. Uh, it, it looks like a pulse ex, uh, excitation. It, uh, so the uh, the property of the the pulse is that the excitation uh, beyond the cutoff frequency is uh, uh, is uniform, is very uniform, and uh, almost zero uh, above the cutoff frequency. Uh, and then uh, I traced the. Then I traced the uh, the normalized magnetization in the eagle films, and uh, and then uh, in uh, in space and in time, and then do the uh, two dimension fast Fourier transformation, and then I can got the uh, dispersion relation ships in in the eagle stripe. Uh, so uh, here, sorry. Uh, here I ruined. Uh, here in the uh, dispersion relation, uh, I. I noticed the, that uh, the there are two branches uh, uh, of the there are two branches uh, uh, the the dispersions uh, in, in the single eagle stripe and uh, in the 
X stripe with uh, Pomeroy stripe approximate uh, uh, Pomeroy stripe are different. Uh, so uh, specifically, uh, the uh, the two point nine gigahertz and uh, four point five gigahertz are very uh, specific. Uh, here there are some uh, some animations. Uh, I don't know why why it's. Uh, uh, not uh, moving here, uh, but uh, but uh, mm, but but uh, the the idea uh, the conclusion is that uh, for the four point nine gigahertz in the uh, in a single EG stripe, uh, the uh, the edge localized spin waves on the two edges, uh, the the propagating characteristics are, are the same uh, with the same wavelengths and the, the same uh, decay lengths and the same group of velocities. Uh, but uh, for the light point, for the 3.9 gigahertz spin waves, uh, it can only propagate on one edge uh, of the eager the, of the X stripe, uh, which is far away from the Pomeroy stripe, uh, and the point, the four point five gigahertz uh, edge localized spin waves can propagate on both sides of the X stripe, but with different uh, uh, propagating uh, characteristics. Uh, so these values can be uh, figured out using the fitting method. Uh, you, using this, uh, uh, using this uh, uh, formu uh, formula, and uh, the group of velocity is determined uh, uh, using the length to to using the length to divide the the time when the spin wave energy is totally uh, propagating at the end of this uh, X stripe, which is uh, uh, ten micro. Uh, micrometer uh, lens. Uh, so uh, the so the reason I I want to figure out the reason why they are different. Uh, firstly, uh, I studied the effect of uh, of the Pomeroy stripe uh, general uh, general uh, the the static dipolar field uh, would be. Uh, would lead uh, the difference of the effective field on the two edges of the uh, X stripe. Um, so as you, as you can see here, uh, the, uh, the effective magnetic field uh, on, uh, on the single X stripe uh, uh, is uh, quite, uh, uh, quite similar with the effective magnetic field uh, uh, along the the edge, uh, uh, which is uh, far away from the Pomeroy stripe, so they have a similar, very similar uh, uh, propagating characteristics. Uh, so for the 4.5 gigahertz spin waves, um, so as you can see here, the uh, effective mag magnetic field is much stronger uh, than the uh, than the effective magnetic field uh, far away from the Pomeroy stripe. Uh, so this uh, mm, this values the I, I mean the uh, is uh, is very uh, agrees very well with uh, the theoretical. It's uh, it's like that uh, the external field the effective field is like uh, the the strength you hold a loop. Uh, the the stronger, the tighter you hold a loop, uh, the larger the would be the wavelengths, and uh, the faster the the wave would decay. So it uh, agrees uh, with the previous uh, uh, experiment uh, study. Uh, so another uh, effect might be the dynamic coupling, but here there would be no dynamic. Uh, there would be low dynamic coupling. Uh, here, uh, 
uh, because the resonance frequency of pomeroy and the X strip are very different. Mm. So I also do the simulation without uh, uh, pomeroy strip nearby, uh, but uh, there are but uh, there are effective. Uh, uh, there are the the same uh, the same effective magnetic field, the uh, external magnetic field is applied is applied on the on the two sides of the uh, on the two sides of the X stripe uh, on the X stripe uh, and uh, I can uh, we can observe the 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 same uh, the same propagating relation uh, propagating characteristics of the uh, ex, uh, of the spin waves uh, uh, with or without a pomeroy strap. Uh, so here in this study, uh, I could uh, demonstrate uh, that uh, uh, the dispersion curves of the edge localized spin waves uh, can be can be slipped uh, with uh, by the presence of the pomeroy strap and uh, uh, the they have uh, different uh, propagating characteristics uh, on the two edges of the uh, if uh, on the two edges of the X stripe. So uh, the effect of pomeroy is uh, is a source of a static dipolar field uh, instead of coupling with Yig. So uh, the uh, generally uh, speaking speaking, uh, it's like uh, the it's like uh, I put a uh, uh, iron bar in the electromagnet to help to increase the the intensity of the of the uh, field. Uh, so it also looks like the same effect for the uh, pomeroy stripe present here. So uh, uh, that's. Uh, the study on the edge localized spin waves. Uh, so here, yeah, uh, here I, uh, after the study of the edge localized spin wave, I continue to study the, uh, the waveguide spin waves. Mm, uh, firstly, uh, in the pre, uh, in, uh, in the previous study, uh, people have studied the uh, the old mode spin waves. Uh, for the for the waveguide spin waves, since it's quantized in the weight direction, only when the when the wave vectors in the y direction uh, in the y direction uh, satisfies some certain conditions like this. Uh, can the spin waves uh, exist in this uh, uh, stripe? Mm. So previously, people studied the uh, interference of the uh, old mode spin waves because uh, uh, in the uniform, in the symmetric excitation, uh, only the old mode spin waves can be excited here. Uh, so the interference of the old, uh, old mode spin waves would lead to the so-called uh, self-focus phenomenon. Uh, as it's land self-focus, as you can see, the energy can, uh, is, can be converged in the center of the stripe uh, in, uh, with a certain period. Uh, so, so the, here comes the question that uh, what if we uh, introduce the even, even mode spin waves in the stripe? Uh, so uh, firstly, uh, we do some uh, analytical calculation and uh, find out uh, that uh, if we introduce uh, even mode uh, spin waves, the propagating and patterns of the even mode uh, of the spin waves would be changed uh, by the by uh, would be changed by the phase difference between the 
uh, even mode and uh, old mode spin waves. Uh, so, uh, so uh, firstly, the the introduction of the introduction of this uh, uh, even mode spin waves uh, uh, would make the patterns anti-symmetric, uh, and then we uh, if the uh, phase difference can be changed continuously, these patterns would also be continuously changed. I just showed you some uh, typical uh, patterns here with zero. Uh, pi over two and uh, pi and uh, three pi over two. Uh, so how can we uh, excite the, how can we excite the even mode spin waves? One method is to bend the uh, waveguide. Uh, the other method is to tilt the excitation. Uh, in our work, I propose, we propose that if we uh, if we put a, a pomeroy dot nearby, uh, nearby the X stripe, then the uh, the effective uh, uh, internal field of the X micro stripe would be changed here. Then it would uh, excite. Uh, then some uh, even even mode spin waves would be excited here. Uh, so next, uh, I do some uh, magnetic simulation. Mm. So in, in the simulation, uh, I uh, I put uh, the pomeroy uh, on the uh, I put the pomeroy uh, near the first uh, first load, uh, the first anti load, uh, the second load, and the second anti load. I also compared uh, the patterns with uh, theoretical calculation, and uh, we can see that after the spin waves passing by the uh, passing by the pomeroy dot, the patterns uh, would uh, be quite uh, uh, quite in agreement with uh, the patterns when the phase difference is uh, equal to these values here as shown here. Uh, so uh, the explanation might be that uh, the, mm, uh, the even mode uh, the even mode would be generated uh, with uh, with the initial phase equal to zero. However, the original excited uh, old mode has has been has been passed uh, uh, for a certain distance and uh, their uh, face has been shifted, uh, has been shifted, then it would lead to the face difference. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, uh, if we put the pomeroy dot on the, on the other side of the X stripe, of the X stripe, then the it would also lead to a phase difference of pi. Uh, to demonstrate this, this I put uh, uh, multiple uh, pomeroy stripe, uh, pomeroy uh, dots uh, near the X stripe on on one side and and uh, on different on the two sides. Uh, here, here as we can see, when when the spin waves passing by the first. Uh, First uh, pomeroy dot, the spin waves become asymmetric, and uh, passing by the second uh, pomeroy dot, the semi the uh, the uh, the spin wave patterns become symmetric again. The explanation might, uh, might be that uh, the first uh, uh, the first uh, even mode spin waves uh, has been destructively uh, interfered with the second uh, spin waves. And then the, the patterns can be symmetric again. Uh, on the contrary, if we put a pomeroy dot on the other, other side, then the, the two spin waves would uh, construct, constructly uh, interfere and uh, the, uh, the anti-symmetric uh, 
uh, uh, components would be increased uh, and then lead to the uh, and then the anti-symmetric uh, anti-symmetry would uh, be increased. Uh, so uh, for the experiment, uh, I firstly I fabricate uh, some samples and uh, then do the measurement. Uh, firstly, the uh, here the I do the BOS measurement uh, firstly without uh, the presence of uh, pomeroy and and uh, we can say that uh, the patterns is uh, uh, yeah is approximately uh, uh, symmetry and. But uh, after we put a pomeroy dot, uh, I, after I deposit a pomeroy dot, uh, there's a there's a extract and the redo the the BOS experiment. I found that the intensity, the patterns of the of the the patterns of the uh, spin waves can be changed and uh, would no longer be a symmetry. Would no longer would be symmetric, uh, and uh, also I noticed that uh, with the increase of the with the of the external field, uh, the spin wave flows, the spin waves would fl flow toward the pomeroy dot or be expelled by the pomeroy dot. Uh, to figure out the reason, I also do the uh, simulation. And uh, the and the scan along the widths uh, on uh, under different uh, external field. Uh, in the simulation, I found uh, uh, I found that uh, in in the experiment, uh, I found that the spin waves can propagate with the highest efficiency under the 650 uh, external uh, outer external field. Uh, so with the presence of the Pomeroy dot, the uh, the effective field uh, of uh, the position of the 650 Oster uh, would uh, would uh, be changed uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, increase of the external field. Uh, so from the uh, from the uh, right to to the left, uh, yeah. It um, uh, so this simulation, uh, this uh, simulation data uh, sh agree, uh, shows that uh, uh, the position agrees with uh, the peaks of of the BLS intensity. So it means that uh, yeah, the presence of the uh, of this. Uh, Pomeroy dot uh, can help to uh, to drift uh, to attract or or repel or repel the spin wave flows. Mm. So here uh, here uh, in the study of the waveguide spin waves, uh, I found that uh, in theory the phase difference would determine the uh, spin wave patterns. The spin wave patterns, and uh, the the different uh, the phase difference uh, can be controlled uh, by the relative uh, positions of uh, Pomeroy dot, and uh, the spin wave flows uh, uh, can be controlled uh, by the external field um, because the presence of the Pomeroy dot uh, can uh, can attract uh, or repel the the spin wave flows. Uh, so here uh, I've we finished uh, the waveguide uh, uh, spin wave study. So based on the uh, series we studied, uh, so I realized the preliminary rate realized the spin wave for frequency division uh, multiplexing. Uh, so Mm, so the the spin wave for F, uh, frequency division multiplexer is a, a very important uh, uh, device in the in the circuit in the circuit because uh, it helps to 
to combine the uh, the signals, and then uh, we can we can reduce the number of the signal lines uh, in the in the system, and then make the system more uh, more uh, com more compa compatible. Mm, so, uh, previously, uh, before before our study, some people also uh, want to uh, want to realize the frequency division multiplexing function. Uh, but in this studies, the theory is mainly based on the uh, wave vectors. Uh, uh, people, as you can see here, the dispersion relation will uh, reveal that uh, uh, spin waves with different uh, wave vector, including the uh, the amplitude and the direction. Uh, if if uh, if uh, the wave vectors are different, uh, the frequencies would be different. Uh, so uh, so here. Uh, previously, people would uh, use uh, wave vectors. Uh, so, uh, in my study, I focused on the uh, effective magnetic field. So, in the dispersion relations, I was thinking that uh, whether we can use this uh, external uh, field, uh, use the effective magnetic field to realize the frequency division multiplexing. Uh, the answer is yes, so we can. Do it uh, just uh, just uh, simply placed uh, an X stripe around the uh, a, a pomeroy stripe around the X stripe. So to do the uh, experiment, uh, I use two microwave sources and uh, uh, combine them using the microwave uh, uh, splitter and uh, uh, send the signal to the coupling waveguide to excite the uh, spin waves uh, with two different uh, frequencies uh, at the same time. Uh, so using the the setup, uh, firstly I do the BLS uh, uh, experiment. Uh, firstly, it's uh, simultaneous excitation. Uh, so you remember we we used the uh, two. Uh, to microwave sources, uh, so this experiment is uh, performed uh, under the under the two excitations, under the two excitations with the different uh, frequencies. One is four gigahertz, the other is four point three gigahertz. Uh, so we can say that uh, there are two beams, two beams. Uh, 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 was there are two beams emitted uh, uh, from the excitation simul uh, at the same time, but uh, the two beams uh, have two different uh, frequencies and uh, uh, they can propagate uh, uh, along the X stripe. One is uh, far away from the from on the Pomeroy stripe, which is uh, four gigahertz, and uh, the other would be closer to the Pomeroy stripe which is 4.3 gigahertz uh, so the frequency is uh, can be determined roughly by the uh Kittel's equation uh, as i this i mentioned here uh, which which is supposed the fmr frequency is supposed to be 3.8 gigahertz at the external field of 680 Oster. Uh, but uh, mm, but uh, the spin waves frequency uh, would uh, generally a little bit higher than the fmr frequency uh, so it's 4 gigahertz and 4.3 gigahertz uh, so uh, when i do the uh, when we do the single excitation experiment uh, i found that uh, this uh, uh, these results uh, uh, can be re is reproducible uh, compared with the simultaneous excitation. Uh, so, uh, so the patterns uh, is uh, very sim very similar 
and uh, the intensity uh, is uh, is also a little bit stronger uh, because uh, uh, under the same uh, under the uh, the simultaneous excitation, the, the, there would be some, um, due, uh, the intensity is weaker due to the uh, comparity uh, of, the, uh, of the signal. The, there would be some, inter, uh, some effect of the, uh, of the um, excitations. Um, so uh, to uh, to figure out uh, the reason uh, to the reason that uh, why it uh, can be separated, uh, I, I also do the simulation combined with the uh, weight scan uh, BLS experiment, and uh, it shows that uh, mm, uh, in, in the simulation it shows that. Uh, uh, the effective field uh, closer to the closer to the Pomeroy stripe is uh, much uh, is about uh, 100 uh, Oster higher than the effective field uh, further than the X stripe. Uh, so uh, so quantitatively quantitatively it agrees well with uh, frequency difference uh, if. Uh, uh, if we consider its uh, its uh, uh, linear uh, its uh, linear uh, relation under a small uh, field uh, uh, difference, so uh, another point is that uh, here the bandwidth width closer to the uh, to the Pomeroy stripe looks uh, uh, looks uh, uh, wilder because uh, the the effective field uh, looks uh, wider than the uh, field uh, uh, far away from the Pomeroy stripe. Uh, so also we, we can uh, predict that uh, this device is also turnable. If we change the, the external field uh, uh, continuously, then we can choose another type, uh, another pair of frequencies and uh, divide them. So uh, the conclusion is that uh, uh, we can realize uh, the frequency division multiplexing function. And uh, the key factor is the effective analytic field uh, manipulated by the Pomeroy. Uh, so the therefore the mm, the magnetic approximate uh, magnet uh, structures can tune can continuously tune the uh, f uh, frequency division multiplication functions. So here uh, to make a summary, is that firstly I I start from the Newton's second uh, law and uh, to uh, to talk about some uh, spin wave theories and uh, the using this method uh, to do some to do this uh, researchers. So uh, what I studied is uh, uh, is all uh, all about the effective magnetic field inside the the magnetic structures uh, I'm interested in. Uh, so. Um, many other effects uh, that uh, uh, I, I would think uh, can be predicted uh, using this series. Uh, so, uh, so the comments on my on this work is that uh, that uh, they are not uh, so uh, they are not they are not so uh, innovate innovating. Uh, and uh, just uh, uh, it looks like some repairment of the old theories and uh, uh, you using ju I, I just uh, put some uh, micromagnetic uh, uh, structures uh, near uh, approximate uh, approximate to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the structures I study and uh, 
to to do some uh, uh, no, to do some um, repairment repairing uh, studies. Yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, uh, what I that, that's my um, that's all about my work. Thanks. Great, great. Thank you, thank you. 